105 years ago today, the Congress passed the 19th Amendment granting women the right to vote under the Constitution for the first time ever. In the 240-year history of our country, the passage of the 19th Amendment is without question one of America's best moments. It was one of the greatest leaps ever in our march to become a more perfect union. But it was also, more importantly, a great culmination of decades of sacrifice, struggle, and persistence, much of which was centered in upstate New York, I'm proud to say, at Seneca Falls and other places. We cannot possibly name the countless women and Americans who sacrificed in ways big and small to secure for women the right to vote, but we honor their memory all the same. Today, I am wearing this yellow rose to honor, in honor of today's, uh, today's historic observance. I'm wearing this yellow rose to honor that historic observance, and there will be a viewing for the original signed copy of the 19th Amendment today in the Capitol. I'll be stopping by, and I encourage my colleagues to do the same, because it was truly a landmark moment for America. Of course, we celebrate today's anniversary of the passage of the 19th Amendment, mindful of the great task still in front of us. More than, ha more than a century stands between this generation and the generation that made it possible for women to vote. But in many ways, we still share in their struggle for greater justice and greater equality. We still carry the same moral duty they bore to make our nation a more, per a more, a more faithful reflection of our founding ideals. The march for equality for women and for all Americans is still not over. When the fundamental right of women to make their own choices about their bodies has been stolen from them, the march is still not over. When women are told by hard right politicians that their health care decisions are not theirs to make, that they must travel in some instances across state lines and across time zones to access basic reproductive care, the march is still not over. When a radical majority, a radical conservative MAGA majority of the Supreme Court overturned decades of precedent by repealing the protections of Roe v. Wade, the march is still not over. On this 105th anniversary of the passage of the 19th Amendment, we must confront the ugly truth that women, sadly, have fewer freedoms than they did just a few years ago. Let's remember that as we're all commemorating the right to vote. On this 105th anniversary of the passage of the 19th Amendment, we must confront the ugly truth that women sadly have fewer freedoms than they did just a few years ago. So tomorrow, the Senate will take action. Tomorrow, the Senate will defend the freedom of choice with a vote on the Right to Contraception Act, led by Senators Markey and Hirono. Federal protections for contraceptives are a critical piece of protecting women's reproductive freedoms. And this legislation would codify the right to con contraception into federal law. As MAGA Republicans continue to block protections for access to contraception on the state level, in states like Virginia and Nevada and Arizona, it is all the more reason to move to protect contraception at the federal level. To those who think that federal action protecting access to birth control is unnecessary, just look at what's happening in states like Virginia and Nevada and Arizona, where Republicans are openly blocking these very protections. I would hope that protecting access to birth control would be the definition of an easy, uncontroversial decision here in the Senate. But the vote will tell all when we gavel in tomorrow. And there will be more action to come. <clears throat> Last night, I began the Rule 14 process for the Right to IVF Act, led by Senators Duckworth and Murray and Booker, to place it on the legislative calendar and make it available for consideration on the floor. I intend to bring this legislation protecting access to IVF up for a vote very soon. Millions of Americans have relied on IVF to have children, but after a stunningly radical decision by the Alabama Supreme Court jeopardized access to IVF, families are rightfully worried that this option could be stripped away. So Democrats will act to safeguard and strengthen IVF access for all Americans so that everyone has a chance to start a family. 
in the coming weeks, Senate Democrats will put reproductive freedoms front and center before this chamber so that the American people can see for themselves who will stand up to defend their fundamental liberties.